Hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and here we are now back with part four of the build of this Meng Chieftain Mark 10. And uh, what a lovely kit it is, it's really, really nice. As you can see off camera, I've gone on and built the other set of tracks. Um, I've also got to blow some of the dust out of there. You can see some sanding dust in there. It does actually work with um, sanding out those ejector pin marks. I've done it in kind of, you know, 12 or 15 sort of links at a time. Hold it down firm, really firm with a rule, and then you can come along with your sanding stick and just sand away, just like so. And you don't run the risk of breaking any links and then you just turn it around and do the same on the other side. Um, if you try and do it like this, what happens is it'll get caught on a link, lift it up and snap the pin off. So then you've got to do some repairs. There are plenty of extra spare track links. Where did I put them? Here we go. So we've got, those, we've got um, two, four, six, eight, ten, at least twelve spare track links in there. And then you've got all these spare pins as well. So... Thanks for that, mate. Very sensible. Um, that's in my kit. You may not have that many. You may have more. But, uh, I guess it depends how they do the... Um, no doubt they put the track links out by weight. So um, so there we are. They are lovely. They're some of the nicest workable tracks I've ever seen. Really, really nice. Very nice. They're going to be a nightmare to paint because we've got to get into all the nooks and crannies in the front and the back. So, yeah, what we'll have to do is probably put a pair of gloves on and just pull it over my hand, spray a bit, pull it over, spray a bit or somehow lock the airbrush to paint and just hold it in front of the airbrush like that. So have automatic painting. So, or get Jess to do the spray and I don't know. Right, so um, so there we go. So I'm gonna blow that dust out of there. So that's them done. And then we can, what we can do with these is roll them up for now and put them away because we don't need them. Put that one over there, put that one over there. Now remember this is a group build. This is this project is being videoed as a video build on my channel, but it's also a group build. I'll put the thing up now. Um, and it's for Black Rifle Model Works. Uh, the Black Rifle Model Works community over on Facebook, and there is also a Black Rifle Model Works YouTube channel. So go and have a look, go and subscribe. Luke does some amazing work. Um, some of his painting is some of the best I've ever seen. It's just amazing work. So um <clears throat> We've got the, the hole built up, as you know, with all the suspension on. That's all dry and working out. That was about two days ago. Um, at the meantime, I've been working on the Hellcat because that's what you've been asking for. So that's what I've done. So here, we're going to start here on step 11. If you remember, we, we, we finished at step 10. Then we jumped forward to 28, fitted all the suspension, done the tracks. 95 links, it says in the instructions. The guy I saw on another video build suggested 94. I felt it was a bit too tight. So I've gone for 95, as suggested. Um... We've got some holes to drill. I can hear aircraft flying over. It's Fairford today, so uh, there may be some aircraft going home. So it's saying here to drill these holes one millimeter. So we get a one millimeter micro box drill, and this is I'm covering tools in this video, aren't I? Micro box drills. You'll see these on eBay. Very similar looking box. It might have micro box written that way. It might have it in lowercase letters. <clears throat> Unless it's like this, with capital letters, don't buy them. Um, they, there are some about for like two ninety five, particularly these here. I've covered this loads of times before. Like this dark blue here, absolute utter junk, <clears throat> not worth having. I've got a bloody frog in my throat again. So it's telling me to drill four holes here. So we've got one there, and this is obviously for the uh, steel brew armor, and then one there. So that's those all drilled out. So there we go. And Mark, if you're watching this, today is the 9th of July, 2020. Is it the 9th or the 8th? It's the 9th. It's Sunday the 9th of July, 2023. And I have not received anything yet. So I hope what you've sent me hasn't been lost in the post. Mark has kindly sent me some paint for this. You, you are a generous lot. I'm getting all sorts of stuff sent to me lately. It's really, really nice of you. Thank you very, very much. So there we are. So that's those holes dealt with and deburred. Still got a bit of a burr on that one. What we can do is come in with a, 
This is called a burr. This is, a, I think this is called a flame or a tulip. We can just take the edge off of those holes. Just for a more professional look, really. Okay, so there we are. So that's those done, so we can put our drill away. Put our drill away, move over, go on. Put those away. This is the um, David Union pin vice, David Union 150. It's absolutely awesome. Available from Premium Hobbies, although he sold out at the moment. I did a review on it and he just sold out in about 10 minutes. So, um, but absolutely brilliant. So that's those holes drilled. Right, I've still got a bird on the edge of there. Go away. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the camera off and clear my bloody thread. Okay. So, um, holes are drilled and deburred. Everything's good. So, looking at the instructions, step 11, we've got to add these two inner stiffeners here. So they are C1 and C22. I've got them off here. I've got them cleaned up. Uh, they've got ejector pin marks on them, but they're on the inside, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so this one... We've got these four little cutouts here. This one is going to go in this side. So that's just going to sit in there. I have test fitted these and they do fit just like every other bloody part of this kit. They fit beautifully. Just put a drop of cement in each of those tabs. There we are. And just give it a little nudge down, drop a cement in there as well, and then we'll do the same on this side, right way up nice. just clip that in there, there we go, so how are we doing guys, I hope we're all well, I don't know how many of you have joined in on the group build, I haven't put any pictures up yet on the group build, which I must do, Oh dear, it was silly wasn't it? There we are, right. So that's gone like that. Now I'm looking forward to the instructions because I'm doing Berlin Camo. <clears throat> if I get to the page where the Berlin Camo is in here, we can see we've got a lot of masking to do around the front here, okay, around where the headlights are. We've got masking to do on this rear plate here. So what I'm doing is going to be very selectively assembling this so as not to get in the way of the masking. Um, it's going to be a lot easier. Like here, there are two white, I'll call it white, there's two white rectangles here. So it's going to be easier to spray it white, mask them off and then paint the grey or brown whatever. And then put the headlights in after. If I leave the headlights in, I'm going to have to spray the grey first and then mask off around the headlights and then spray all in around and it's going to be a nightmare. So it's just easy just to spray what I can. So what I'm doing is looking through the instructions. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do any of this, I don't think. Um, I need to bookmark this, don't I, with something. Um, we don't appear to have any... Yeah, it's all white. So that area there is white, that area there is white. So that would be okay. Um, no, wouldn't it get in the way, wouldn't it? So I think I'll fit those afterwards, although they have got big welds on them, so that's going to be a pain. Um, <clears throat> and then, but that's what this is all about. This is all about the learning for me about doing this very, very complicated uh, scheme. And I want to get every single edge as sharp as anything because they were brush painted using masking tape. So it would have been very, very sharp, crisp, clean edges. So we'll be very careful of, you know, where we have masking tape going over a ridge, you'll end up with a soft line. So we have to be very careful of that. Um, <clears throat> but it's looking like if I put those on, I'm going to have to paint the grey first and then mask off and do the white anyway, because those, those lifting eyes or towing eyes, whatever they are, are there. And they're in the, in the white. So there we go. Um, the random square of brown there look so we'll do those um 
yeah we'll do those that's gonna be okay because the thing is putting those on after painting is gonna be a nightmare because they've got great big weld seams around them so we'll do those in a minute I also want to put this ring in um, because it goes in there are some ejection pit marks on here but they're so shallow you, you just sand them away and they disappear so uh, that's gone in that'll go in nicely we've got two little ridges on here you can see one there one there and they fit down into these two slots get this away because it's blacking out so we'll get get into those two recesses there and I want to put this on now so we go it sort of clicks into place so I can glue it from the inside it saves having glue marks on the outside and there we are that's our turret ring glued in nice and neatly just pull it over so the gaps even all the way around we'll probably um, put some Mr. Surface or something in there so I'm not sure if it can be seen there where's the turret here's the turret here no, none of that's going to be seen anyway but you might see some of it down here so uh, yeah I think I probably will fill it in because it does look a bit Looks a bit like a plastic model, doesn't it? So we'll get something in there and then um, we'll probably put some Mr. Service in the ground with a cotton bud, just so it looks like a seam. Right, <clears throat> so I'll go on and get these parts off. I'll be darting around these instructions. I'll get these parts off and we'll get them on and then um, look at what else we're going to do or can't do. Change of heart, guys. I've decided to jump forward. To step 18 and assemble the tall, the hull halves because if we need to clamp or anything then the less bits we've got in here getting in the way the better so these little pieces down in here these are the parts that we added in so they're like little they're just giving it a bit of strength I think so I think what we can do is grab some clothes pegs clamp that closed and make sure the peg isn't touching the glue joint So you see there, if I had all detail parts on here like they're telling me to do, here, telling me to fit all these parts, they would be getting damaged now. And that's why I'm doing it this way around. There is logic to my mental things I do. Peg in there. Peg in there. I also want to pull this hole together a bit because it seems to be a bit gappy there. Glad I put that rig in because otherwise it would go out of shape. If I can get clamp on there, if indeed the clamp is wide enough, yeah. I'm going to get one on here as well. That will have two, we'll have one each side to make sure we're not hurting the suspension. Sorry about the noise guys, I seem to have a, well, that needs to go in there right, I seem to have a noisy child here today, that's better. Well that's proper nice now. Let's use one of these, they're stronger. 
there we go so that's all clamped together now ready to glue and before we do anything I'm going to get the rear panel off and check the fit because if, if it needs to be opened up if we glue these bits here we won't be able to open it up so I'm just going to get the rear panel off so I can check the fit here's an example of just how bloody awesome this kit is look at the fit of that rear panel look fit there it's it's absolutely amazing it is absolutely amazing how well it fits how, how have they done this it's bloody awesome so that fits perfectly so we don't need to worry about putting that in at the moment so um what we can do now is start to look at getting some glue in here or cement should i say so it gets hold off so i'm going to get some into there and we're going to get some into there And that'll capillary around everywhere. So I could still do with a peg on it in the middle just to hold it down. So I'm going to put a drop of cement in here. And just give it a little gentle help in the downward direction. So that's probably better off here using a paintbrush actually. Let's grab a, let's grab a paintbrush. I could have found something better than I couldn't. Oh, here we go. There's a nice one. These are my old paintbrushes I use for Mr. Surfacer. The reason I'm using a paintbrush is because it's longer, it's easier to get into these tight spots without making a mess. There we are. I'm going to carry on, go around and do this, the rest of this. Once the seam's all glued and everything, I'll come back and we'll look at doing something else. And so we have the hull all clamped up and glued together. So let that dry for a couple of hours, make sure the joints are nice and solid. Um, <clears throat> and here we have a lot more detail still going on the hull. Now I've noticed that these plates go on the side here and they have holes in them, these here, parts D22. So you're going to be able to see the back of the toolboxes, these toolboxes here which go on the sides. Again they're telling us to put on before we put the hole together, I don't know why. Um, so I want to paint these and get the back of them painted black before they uh, get put on so we don't, we don't have grey plastic showing. And we'll also paint around these holes because when it's on the model you won't be able to get up underneath so we'll paint those as well while they're still on the sprue I expect. Um, but I want to get on and build these toolboxes so they're nice and cured and ready for when we need them. So we've got the the main sort of body here and then we've got this this front hatch with the molded on latches and that which look very nice indeed. Got a bit of a sprue nib still on there I haven't removed. get that off. <clears throat> Bloody frog in my throat today is a night nightmare. Maybe the frogs are breeding in my throat so I've got more than one in there now. So there we are. Yeah, they're all done. Okay, so that's going to go into there. And again, we've got these chamfered edges so we get a nice sharp Head like that and it actually looks like a door on the end rather than a plastic box so this is going to take some very careful assembly I think what I'll do is get a drop of the quick setting into the middle just to hold it Go in there. Just hold that together. So yeah, a little bit of care needed there, guys. I'm just gonna 
spread that bottom out a bit. That's gone in a bit too far. I'm just going to pull it out a touch. That should be straight across there. I've got a feeling it's angled in. Yeah, you can see we've got a gap there. It's angled in. So I'm just going to push it out. There we are, straight now. Means it'll fit the hole better. So there we go, so that's that. And you can see we haven't got glue oozing out or any big seams or anything around the door. So they actually look like doors on the end. And then we've got this top cover, which is probably, is, yes, it's hinged at the back. So we'll have a seam to deal with there. And then all we'll do is just glue the back, I think. Put some cement in there and squeeze that down. The same over here, keeping our fingers away from the joint. There we go. We can just leave the front. Now we will we will glue it because it's not an opening seam. There we go. Right. So that's that one done. That is a lovely little assembly, isn't it? Very nice. Fits together beautifully. You've got a seam there that you can't even see. Very, very nice indeed. It's a shame that that there doesn't quite line up perfectly. We'll deal with that when it's dry. You can see there we've got a bit of a mismatch between this part and the top part there on that seam <clears throat> so I'll get the other one done and then I'll be back so while the toolboxes are drying and the hull is drying I'm looking at other assemblies and I've come along here we've got the exhaust muffler exhaust silencer assembly so we've got this main box going together with those four parts we've also got the exhaust um, tailpipe abs going together so I glued one pair together and they fit beautifully and we'll get in there with a burr and thin the metal out and everything we'll thin the plastic out and get that looking lovely um just going to grab a pair of tweezers and make sure we've got the the front nice and round that's good um these when you get them off they've got pins on them on one half and obviously the other half has got holes be very careful when you're sanding because what they've done there's like two um, pips here I should imagine there that there should be a plate in there or something a butterfly but there's two pips you can see them on there and they're slightly raised and they fit into little gaps in here so instead of having a two halves of a pip model they've got one pip which goes into the other so be careful don't just get on there with a sanding stick and sand it flat um, hold it in your fingers on that end to cover up the pips and then sand it like that so you get rid of the sprue nib but not the pips. We've got to start a campaign, save the pips. So that'll go together like that. That goes in there like that look. And then we'll get some cement in there. Somebody was telling me these exhausts don't actually rust. I'll have to check my references on that one. I would have thought they would. I wouldn't have thought they'd use fancy materials, but maybe I'm wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. Okay, so there's our exhaust done. So they can cure. Leave those for a day or two to go really solid. So the box here, um, cleaned up all the sprue nibs, got all the edges nicely cleaned up. Have it dry fitted, so I'm not sure how it's going to go together. We've got these side pieces going on, so that one's going to go on that side. So I'm assuming they fit, yeah, they fit on the outside like that. So very nicely done as well. This kit is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the best I've ever built. I don't mean the best job I'm doing, I don't mean 
it's the best job I've ever made of a model. I mean, this is as a plastic kit. This is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at the fit on there. They've, they've got that so that it gives you the impression of that bolted on panel. That Absolutely gorgeous. And then that matches up, that cable conduit matches up perfectly on there, look. So, uh, beautiful. And then this plate's going to go on. Make sure we get it the right way round. That's going to go in there like so. So that's cool. There we go. Check references and see if these seams are supposed to be there or if they need to be filled in or whatever. There's also a plate that goes on the top. It's PC or D10, but it's got slots in it, so you're going to see through. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is all painted black before we put that on. Um, it's just something that you, as you know, I like to do. And then this, in turn, is going to fit onto here. And would you look at that? That conduit carries on down. And there, look. <laughs> it's just lovely, isn't it? So, <clears throat> that again can be left to dry. As I said, I'll check my references and check for seams. Those exhausts have got to be left to dry before we can sand them and deal with the ends. The hull's got to be left to dry. So, I think we'll call that a day with this bit. And then um, I'll come back in a minute. Well, a second for you, probably tomorrow for me. Next day now, and everything's all dry. Um, I've put some Mr. Surfacer around there. You can see how it's sunken into the groove. So we'll remove that with some um, leveling thinners. I'm also going to see if we need to do anything about this seam here or around the front and everything. We'll have a look at that. Um, so this uh, exhaust silencer box on the back. I had a look. You've got this, this seam across the top. You can see there there's a seam across there. And that is actually a weld. So what I'm going to do is make a weld. So... For the newer modellers out there, you might enjoy this. The, the older modellers out there, you'll have seen this a million times before. So I've got a piece of sprue, and I'm just going to put it over this flame. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a piece of stretched sprue. We're just going to melt the plastic until it droops like that. There we go, and then it's not soft enough yet. Make sure it's nice and soft. The flame is going. And we just pull it, just like so. There we go, and that broke off because the flame went because the candles at it. Um, I think we'll try another piece just to show you how, how it works if you do it properly. So just get it over the flame. Get the plastic really soft and gooey. There we go. You see it start to go shiny. Let me just pull it until we get the sort of diameter we want and then just hold it. That's it. So the candles are the candles had it by the look of it. So just cut this off here, cut that off there, and then that can go in the bin. And we'll use this piece here. And then what we can do is hold that in place there. We'll get some extra thin. Just put some extra thin on there. And just move it into the right position so it's in the groove. I'm struggling to see this. My eyes are uh, streaming this morning. This is the next day now. It's Monday. Monday the, I guess it's the 10th, because yesterday was the 9th. So today is probably the 10th, looking at the uh, law of averages and everything as it is. Just heard on the news that some poor teacher in Tewkesbury has been stabbed by a student. What the hell is going on in this world? There we go. So that's our piece of sprue glued on. It's not easy to see on this light coloured plastic. But that's our piece of sprue glued on. Okay. So what we'll do now is just cut it off at the ends, like so. 
And then to simulate a weld seam, what we'll do is we'll get some extra thin, brush it on, plenty on there. We want it really, really wet. And then just make marks in it with a pair of tweezers or something, a blunt tool. Just push it down and make marks in it and then it will look like a weld. Just like so. You can use, if you've got a spline bar, you can run a spline bar over it. Or a neural tool, like a, you know this, this part here. That's knurled, you can run that over it, that'll do the same thing. But um, what you want to do is just make it a raised lump, which has got a bit of a rough finish to it. And then it'll look just like a wild, and it looks better than a seam line. As you can see there, it's very neat and tidy. There you go. See it there in the shadow. There's your weld seam. So, uh, there we are. Job done. Right. What's next? I think I'll do some work on that hull and then I'll come back when that's done because you don't need to see all that. Right, so um, <clears throat> here's the hull all enclamped and everything. I've put some Mr. Surfacer under there and removed it with a cotton bud. And as you know, I put some round there, remove that with a cotton bud. And now I need to just put some more in. So I'm going to show you basically what I do. This is a product called Mr. Surfacer and this is the 1200 version. If you know my channel, you'll know I love this stuff. This is the 1200, it's the thinnest one. You get 1500 as well. Um, but basically it's a, it's like a filler primer, it's a brush on filler and you can use it for all sorts of different things. You can stipple it on to get a cast texture, you can use it as a filler. But the beauty of it is you can you can put it on and then use Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners, this one here, or you could use IPA um, and remove it. So as you can see I've gone round here and painted some in. I've got a couple of gaps in here so I'm just going to put some more on. and I'm going to show you what, what I do with it. So I'll put this on here just over this joint, let it go in, okay, we've got a couple of gaps that I just want to fill in, so literally we're just painting it over so it fills in the gaps and if you, as I say if you're familiar to my channel you'll know all about Mr. Surfacer because I love the stuff as uh, as James would say from to boldly go model works um, as he would say I have this on my cornflakes so uh, there we are so the beauty of this is you can you can sand it or you can use use uh, thinners to remove it. Now I'm just going to put a drop on the back of here as well, just as a check. So you can see I filled these gaps with um, super glue, but just to check that it's actually filled. I'll brush some of this in here and then I'll sand it off. And there is a downside to this. If you use super glue to fill your gaps and eject your pins and everything, obviously it dries quicker, um, but also it doesn't shrink back. Now with Mr. Surfacer, it will actually shrink. So, and if you give it a good wet coat of primer, then obviously the thinners in the primer will dissolve the Mr. Surfacer and it will shrink back. The beauty of it is it can remove the cotton bud. So, as you will have seen me do many, many times before, in areas like this where you don't mind having a seam left it doesn't need to be sanded completely flat you can use the thinners to remove it if you need it to be completely flat you sand it and I would use super glue because otherwise it will shrink back so like in areas under here I've just I've put some in there and then I've removed it with thinners and it's just filled the, the gap that's there so that is the way to go I'll tell you what this very light grey plastic is paying havoc with the white balance on the camera so um and I'm not sure how to set it so that it stays put. So I just wipe the cloth off like so on a, on a, on a cloth. Um, and that's it. I never actually clean my brushes because as soon as you put the brush back in the Mr. Surfacer again, it dissolves what's on the brush. So that's that all done. And you can see there our weld seam is dry. That's all done. So happy with that, happy how it looks. So we'll leave this to dry now for a few minutes and then I'll come back and remove it with the cotton bud. Alright, so while that's drying we can go on and fit this rear panel 
jumping around a bit in the instructions I'm sorry I know some of you uh, hate me doing that but some of you actually love me doing that so it's uh, it's one of those can't please everyone all the time but what I'm doing is just as I've said earlier I'm doing as much as I can without causing myself issues down the road when it comes to masking to paint the camouflage so that rear panel is just it's just absolutely gorgeous that fit got that weld there around the bottom I mean it's just look at it it's stunning I mean, it's just absolutely stunning so we'll come along with some extra thin and we'll just put a drop in the middle there let that capillary around but drop in there and some up there some down there we've got a weld seam in there as well we've got a weld seam across the bottom here we can add a drop in there where it's run inside the the hull there we are and also in here on that lower edge you can run some in there and I'm just going to grab my knife handle just to push the end in like so. It's one of the nicest fitting parts I've ever seen. Really, really nice. And I'll tell you what, we'll be starting that Hong Kong Models A20 very soon because the Airscale cockpits arrived. And um, yeah, that's going to be a lovely fitting kit as well. I just know it. Hong Kong Models always have nice fits. They always do. There we go. Right. So, that's that in. I'm tempted to go around there with some Mr. Service, so the same as I have there. And then we can remove that with a cotton bud. But I'm going to let the glue just dry off a bit first. I'm going to check my references because I'm not sure what that would look like there in reality. But I've got my Chieftain books here, kindly sent to me by Phil. So. They are wonderful sources of reference. Here's one of them right next to me here underneath the box. There's one there and you can see here straight away on the front of there we've got the rear but just inside the cover there is a picture of the rear end. Where is it? There we go. And it looks like at the top there there's nothing. No weld seam or anything so just noticed something on here the end of the barrel is rifled I wonder if Meng have got the end of the barrel rifled yeah it looks like there's nothing up there you see here oh there is a weld seam there by the look of it so we may well do our stretch sprue again in here and put a weld seam in there we shall see but, um, make sure it's not going to interfere with the fit of anything else so that's going in there like that, so it won't interfere with the fit of that. It may on just on those corners. But yeah, we'll put a, we'll, we'll do a weld seam on there with our stretch sprue again. So uh, I'll see you back when I've done that. So weld seam is done. You can see it's just a piece of stretch sprue put into that seam. That's that done. So that's looking good. And then looking at these exhausts, as you can see, I started doing this one and stopped because I wanted to show you. You can see what as molded it's quite thick in section what I've done is sort of opened it out to make it look a lot more realistic bear in mind it's got a rolled edge so it won't have a sort of thin edge like a normal exhaust so what I've got here is a three mil burr um, and I'm just going in basically sort of roughly at an angle and just going in and removing plastic to a sort of more suitable depth to make it look a bit more hollow and then what I can do is come along with this other burr that I've put away for some stupid reason and just remove some material from there in a tapered fashion. Just to thin out the edge. And then as I say, go in, keep it clear, 
just go in, take some more away, and then move it around just to sort of blend it in with that taper. Don't try this until the glue's been on there at least 24 hours, otherwise it will just fall apart on you. So there we go. And as you can see, we've thinned it out quite a lot, gone quite deep. And once it's got some matte black paint in there, it'll look great. Just clean some more out of there. There we are. Job done. So now we've got a pair of exhausts that are a lot more realistic looking than than having the other ones. So when they face down anyway, they sort of go on like that. So they face down. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it does make it look a lot better in my opinion. Always worth doing on exhaust pipes. Or anything tubular really. Car with squeaky brakes outside. So, moving on to this. Remember we put this Mr. Surfacer around here. These things, by the way, they're called burrs and they're available on Amazon or whatever. You don't need to get the expensive ones, just get the cheapest ones you can. Um, and you get all sorts of different shapes and sizes. You can see I've got them here. There's there's a ball, there's a round nose. That's It's either called a flame or a tulip or something. There's a straight one there. So, uh, yeah, and there's a straight three mil there. That's the most handy one of all because it's good for deburring drilled holes as well. Um, so, Mr. Color Level and Thinners, okay, or IPA, alcohol. So, isopropyl alcohol IPA, if somebody asked me if it stood for Indian Pale Ale, it does, but uh, not in this instance. So, all we do is go around and just remove the excess Mr. Surfacer with the cotton bud. And as you can see, it just leaves the Mr. Surfacer, I'll use the other end to mop up, it just leaves the Mr. Surfacer in the gap, as you can see there. Okay, so we'll end up with a, you'll see a line there underneath the paint, but you won't, it won't, it won't completely remove, it's got a bit on the outside there, just remove that. It's not like sanding it flat, so this is really handy if you're, if, you're, if you've got a seam and it's in between a load of detail, you, you can remove the excess filler with your cotton bud, but it won't damage any detail. Whereas when you're sanding, it will. So that's the best way to go about it. Right, so. There we go. So we shall carry on. I've sanded these already. And uh, I don't think much has stayed in there. It's mainly... Um, it's mainly super glue, but uh, that's that all done. Uh, we've done the weld seam on there. There's nothing more to do with them. We've done those exhausts. So now we need to move on and look at doing something else. I think we're going to get these pieces glued on here. Right, pushing ever further forward. As I said earlier, we're going to fit these parts on the front here, these lifting eyes or whatever they are. And then I'm going to fit these brackets here, which have the rubbers on the top of them. I'm going to fit the rubbers, even though they're, they're a different colour, but I want it all painted as one. Um, and we've got these parts here going a D37 on one side, D40 on the other. And as you can see, they've got a tiny ejector pin mark in them that I would suggest filling. I'm not sure if they're going to be exposed on the finished model, but you can see the part going on there. So it's going to be sort of visible here, if you like, um, unless there's something going on behind there. Uh, no, there isn't, so it will be quite visible. In fact, you can see, when you look at this image here, you can see the back of that part there. So I would suggest, or recommend doing that, because when you start doing washes and stuff, they really make ejector pin marks pop out. So, um, obviously these parts have got a flat side and a detailed side, and the detailed side is going inwards. So that's just going to basically sit in there, like that. Go. That's just going to sit in there like that. So we'll get some extra thin going. Get that glued in. Like so. Make sure it's vertical. What we can do then is dry fit the toolbox, which is going to be going up against it. Or kind of up against it. Just check they sort of sit parallel. You can see there. 
that's parallel on there, so that's good. And the reason I want to get these on is because they've got these holes, I want to get up in there with paint and make sure it's all painted black. Um, I'm really conscious of not having any of this light grey plastic exposed, as you well know. Not that it should really matter on this, because with being Berlin camo, this is basically the base colour, isn't it? Um, there we go, so that's that in there. And we'll do the same on the other side. Put this one in here. Lovely fit as well, just like every other part of this kit so far. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking, is it, are they the first eje um, ejection pin mold, ejection pin marks I've had to deal with? I think they are. So we'll have that toolbox on there. Sure, it's all nice and parallel. I'm assuming they're vertical because the, the, the face they're sitting on is, is on an angle. I'm assuming they're vertical, not perpendicular to the surface they're on. Let's look again at this painting guide. Yeah, they certainly look as though they're vertical, don't they? Not that it really matters anyway. So that's them gone down like that. And then we've got these pieces here, D37. Is this one so you've got the plain side facing back ah, okay these are going to butt up against there let's get that in with some tweezers there we go it's not going to butt up against there at all Nigel what are you talking about I'm talking garbage again That's gone in there. And then that one should go in there. Doesn't want to go for some reason. It's a bit weird. Let me get this off camera and I'll get it in. I'll get it. All right, got that in the end. It was um, very weird. It just did not want to go in the hole. <laughs> but when I put some glue in there, it just fell in place. So very strange. Uh, so we've got these hooks on the front, or these lifting eyes, whatever they are. And these are handed D45 and D46. This is D46 on this side. So that's literally going to sit in that hole in there. And then we'll get some extra thin in there and get it welded in. We're going to need some Mr. Surfacer in there. I think we've got a bit of a gap down the side. For some reason they've put the slot off to the side rather than in the middle. So therefore you lose some of the weld detail, which is a bit strange. I don't know why they've done that. Seems a little weird. As you can see, the, the tab is off to one side. And the slot is off to one side. So it interferes with the, the beautiful moulded on weld detail. Very strange. Put a bit of cement on there just to tack it in. And then drop that in and then I'm going to put a nice drop of extra thin in there to get a proper weld action going. Make sure it's central. On its welded on pad. There we are. That's those two on. We'll go around with some Mr. Surfacer when they're dry. And then we've got this tiny little hook here going in. And that's going into this hole here. Just like so. And then we've got these two pieces here, B28, and they're going in the front, and I'm going to put them with the
Yep, they actually fit that way round. So they go in with the um, with the sprue nib on the top, which is unfortunate. If you try them the other way round, yeah, it doesn't seem to fit so nice. So put it in with the sprue nib on the top, and it fits a lot better. cement into that one screw nib on the top and in she goes just like so as I say get extra thin in there get the wild action going squeeze it down There we are, that's those done. And I'm going to go on and fit these and then um, probably get some black painting done. So let's see how these go on. So that's just going to drop on the top of there, yeah? We've got three slots evenly spaced. Let's just get some cement under there. They'll get painted in Berlin camo and then chipped up, I think, with the rubber black showing through. And then I'm assuming this one here is going to drop on that way round. And it kind of hangs off the end. There we go. I'll get that one. Oops, I just snapped that one in half. What a butcher. I'll get them glued on, then I'll come back and we'll have a look how it looks. Right, so that's all on now. And uh, that one I broke in half is not going to show. So looking through the manual, before we start getting some black primer down, I'm looking I can fit all these parts on the, on the rear plate here. So we've got these hooks going on. So we've got D6 and D8. Now these go on and they face outwards. So that one's going to be this side. So that's going to go in like that. Again, we've got a lovely big fat weld seam on there so we can get the glue in there and let it get to work. Cement, should I say, sorry. And then we'll get that one in there. And there we go. Again, we've got some big fat weld seams on them is really nice very nice indeed I'm just going to put this box in just to make sure they look parallel because they're a bit of a sloppy fit in their slot I just want them to be vertical with the uh, with the perpendicular to the ground that's all and then we've got B11 which is these two hooks here and these are going to slot in here like so. Again, bit of a sloppy fit, but not to worry. So that's fine, like that. And then that one's going into there. that nicely done and then we've got these three boxes going across the lower end as I said I've looked at my plans looked at the colour call outs and we're all good here with the masking so these have got different coloured or different coloured different size pins on them so they can't be put in the wrong way round Just drop that in there, 
a little tap. Again, quite a sloppy fit, so we make sure they're all good. We've got this angled piece here, and that's going into there. You can see again, quite a sloppy fit. So you need to check your alignment. And then this one here is just a symmetrical box, so that doesn't have any odd sized pins or anything. And that one's quite a snug fit, so that's good. And there we are, that's our details on our rear plate. We've got the exhaust is going to go on like that. I think I might fit the exhaust after I've painted it because I've got a feeling I've got some special masking to do. What we can do is fit these exhaust pipes on here. So just hold that in place. Coming underneath. The glue and then we'll get the other side on as well and then we can check them for being level with each other. We put that down on the ground. That one needs to come up a touch. There we are. Job done. The other thing I forgot to do is when I did the grinding in here, I forgot to go around afterwards the extra thin. What that does, that takes out any marks or little burrs or bits of plastic hanging around. It just smooths everything out. You can see now those exhausts look really hollow. But as I say, when they go on, they're like this. So you can't really see up in them anyway, but it's nice to have the correct details on your model, isn't it? Right. So where are we now? I think we're going to call that a day for this video. I'm going to go away and get some black painting done. Um, there's another little another little pipe to go on there so we could get that one off. D41, there he is. And he's open on the end already because he's slide moulded. Thank you, mate. Did I mention this is a beautiful kit? I can't remember if I said or not. This thing is lovely. Just clean that up and what I'm going to do with that little three mil burr I should be able to make that look a little bit more realistic. Maybe go in with a drill. Yeah, it needs a smaller drill. I'll get some drills in there and just open the end of that up and make it look a bit more like it's a hollow pipe rather than a lump of plastic. So I'll get this cleaning up done and then I'll come back. And there we go, you can see I went in with a 1.4 mil drill and opened that up to make it look a bit more realistic. So we've got those pipes on there now, all done, all nice and ready to go on. But I think as I say, when we look at the painting instructions, um, we might fit it. I don't know. We'll have to have a look. Um, it looks like the panel behind it is all grey and then we put that on. So we may actually fit that on. We'll have a look. I'm going to get it all primed first. Because getting paint down in behind there might be quite difficult. I think I'll get it all painted grey and then fit this afterwards because it does fit very nicely. There's no gaps or anything around it. So and I want to get this top painted black before I put that top piece in as well. So I'll get all the painting done and then when I come back for part five we will have all of this will be painted black and we'll be ready to put on our photo etch meshes and stuff and then uh, carry on with building up the fenders and stuff and um, the mud guards and look at where we go from there. But as I say I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if this is boring you but I, what I'm trying to do is come up with a sort of constructive way to get the best paint job. I think you know what I mean. So I'll see you all soon for part five. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, get on over to Black Rifle Model Works Facebook page and YouTube channel and you can see some other 
works being done on this, uh, this, this Royal Group build. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.